Okay, so, right, so, so there was a joke that Kit and I were joking about this morning. Um, do we have children's church this morning? We do. We do, yes. Children are dismissed to children's church. That's right. Uh, there's, a, there's a joke, and you guys probably know the joke. It's where the, the, the pastor goes in on a snowy morning, and he fights through the cold, and, and I think one person shows up, and, and uh, the pastor wasn't going to preach, and, and then the... The, the older man that showed up says something to the effect of, you know, do you go out and feed the cows or something? You know, even when it's snowing, the pastor says, you're right. So the pastor preaches for like two hours and just goes through all of his notes and just pounds home the message. And he gets done. He goes back up to the old man. The old man goes, you wouldn't feed the cow, the one cow, all the food, right? So, um, I, I mean, I totally destroyed that joke. I'm sure somebody could have told it better, but it was close enough, right? Um, so this morning you're not going to get the full food for the entire congregation, I guess, so to speak. We're, we're kind of revamping a little bit, um, although I did really enjoy that last song. That was, that was really good. Uh, we, we get too wild. We may not be a Baptist church anymore. I have to be careful of that, but um, that's right. We, we have a little rhythm in this place. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk this morning uh, I know your, your, your bulletins are going to say that this is another weird story from the Bible. You know, we do that series off and on, uh, intermittent between our other series. So we're going we're to revamp a little bit, and uh, we're, we're just going to talk this morning about decisions. Because decisions is something that every one of us face, every single day, in a myriad of different ways. And so... Uh, while I promise that we won't be super long, I still want to take a few minutes and share this because I think it's important. That's right. You want to come preach, Ryan? You have something ready? Okay. Ryan always has something ready. We could have just had Ryan come and do it. But when I was a senior, uh, junior going on my senior year in high school, I played tennis. And um, it was a very manly sport for those of you that aren't familiar with tennis. Uh, but uh, I had beaten the, the guy who was ahead of me at the end of the last season. So I was technically going into the number one uh, varsity tennis spot, which means that I was, I was the best our school had to offer. I was still really bad, but I was the best our school had to offer. And um, the summer going into my senior year, uh, the way that, the way that uh, challenges worked was that if anybody lower than you called you and said, I want to challenge you for your spot, you had to accept the challenge. Uh, within, you know, some sort of parameter, some sort of means. And so the guy that I had beaten, uh, he calls me one day and he goes, I challenge you this afternoon. And it's the middle of summer, it's pretty hot. You know, I was, I was 18, so that, that didn't bother me. The problem was I had been working all morning on my boat in our garage and uh, lifting, moving, sweating. I was pretty tired. And uh, I felt bad to say no, so I said, sure, you can challenge me. So we go out to the tennis courts where he very quickly hands it to me, and I lost my number one tennis spot. And uh, I remember very, very clearly losing and, and going home and just thinking, what just happened? And then it dawns on me that, you know, the decision to, the outcome of the game probably wasn't as vital as the decision to accept the challenge right then. As to say, hey, that's fine, I'll accept the challenge, but let's do it tomorrow. Let's, let's do it, you know, the next day or something, just, just because I'm not quite ready. It was, it was a decision that I regretted for a short time because two days later I called him and said, I challenge you back, and I readily handed it back to him. So, anyway, I, I was able to go into my, uh, into my senior year as number one and, and ended up playing uh, number one throughout the year. But when we're faced with a decision... When we're faced with the challenge, we have a couple of options, right? Uh, the, way that, the way that this is taught to many of us in school, the way that we learn it, uh, is basically the, the, the fight, fight, the fight, flight, or flee. You know, we, we have a choice um, in how we're going to handle it and, and what we're going to do. We, we, we can either accept a challenge or we can decline a challenge. And, and, and there's, there's pros and cons of both, right? There's, there's, uh, there's some... Pride may be involved in one. There's some humility involved in the other. To, to fight means that you're going to stand up. It means that you're going to accept the challenge, regardless of what the challenge may be. Uh, you may not necessarily agree with it. You may not necessarily like it. But you say, you know what? 
I'm going to accept the challenge. I'm, I'm going to stand tall. I'm going to do it. Uh, it could also mean that you love the challenge. It could also mean that you're excited about the challenge. I mean that you're ready and, and you say, hey, let's, let's do this. Um, to flee means exactly the opposite. To flee means that you say, eh, I'm not really going to do this. I'm not ready for this. I'm not, I'm not willing to, to, to take on whatever this challenge is today. I'm not really to step in and, and do what needs to be done today. And um, again, whether you like it or not, whether you, whether you have chosen that path or not, your decision was to flee. Your decision was, was, was to say no, that you're, that you're not going to do it. You're, you're, you're going to give up. You're going to walk away. You're going to forget about it. Now, a lot of times we, we, we look at the flee response as weak, right? Oftentimes we look at, well, you're not willing to take the challenge. You're not willing to step up to whatever this is. You're, you're, you're making the weak decision, and that may not always be the case. In fact, as we're going to look today as Christians, maybe sometimes the strongest decision is to flee. But this sermon is, is, is not necessarily, um, the sermon is not necessarily telling you what you should do. This sermon is about helping us to look at the decision itself, to look at it from all the different sides, to look at it from all the different angles, and how God requires us to look at these decisions before we make them. So before we do that, um, before we do that, we have to understand that there are a couple of different lines involved in these decisions. Lines, you know, it, what was it, the old cartoons, the Bugs Bunny cartoons, where he'd draw a line in the sand and he'd say, step across this line. You know, and usually Elmer Fudd would step across the line and then he'd say, step across this line. And before you know it, he's stepping over a cliff. You know, you wouldn't see that on today's cartoons. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, and somebody would get shut down for that. But we need to understand that there are two different types of lines that are crossed or that are stood up to when it comes to making a decision. And the first line is, is very simple. This is the line that the world sets. This is the line that the world sets that says, here, here is a good line for us to look at. Matthew 7, 13, the first part of it says this. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. So the line that the world sets, this, this is a very broad line. There's a lot of stuff. That it's just very, it's very easy. It's very simple. This is the line that says, take the easy road. This is the line that says, have fun. Live a life full of pleasure. Don't be too stressed. Don't let life get you down. Just be free. It's no big deal. It's all good, Right? the easy line. 1 Corinthians 10, 23, the first part of that verse says this, all things are lawful. And some of you are like, well, wait, there's more to that scripture. There is, and we're going to talk about that with the second line. But you would be surprised at how many people, especially on college campuses, that will argue the most trivial thing by saying all things are lawful. The Bible says so. Do whatever you want. The Bible gives you permission. The Bible gives you freedom. All things, all things are okay. It's good, right? It's in the Bible. Too many times people take the scripture out of context. They try to use it to justify it and into a means or the things that they're involved with. This is, this is the line, again, the world sets that says, just do it. It's okay. Everything's all right. The thing that we have to understand about this first line, yeah, it's easy to step over that line and say, well, it's all right. The world says it's okay. But unfortunately, just like the old Looney Tunes cartoons, as we step over those lines, we find ourselves usually stepping over a cliff. And we fall short of what God had expected from us. The second line that we're going to look at this morning, uh, this is the line that Jesus Christ set. This is the line that God sets for us that says, hold this line, right? Now, this line is going to be a little bit different than the line that the world sets. Matthew 14, as we continue that scripture, he says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard 
that leads to life. And those who find it are few. What does it mean? Well, it means that this gate's not necessarily the wide gate, right? This gate's not the one it's just easy to funnel through. This is the gate that requires hard work. Not that we're working for our salvation as we're talking in these contexts, but when we choose to go through this narrow gate, it's not going to be easy. This is, this is the gate that's going to require dedication. This is the gate that's going to require resolve. This is the gate that, if we were putting it in worldly terms, this is the gate that's going to require broad shoulders because heavy will your burden be. One of the number one things that, that, that I share with people when, when, when I witness to them, when I share the gospel, when we talk about salvation, is I always make so very clear to say, listen, just because you give your life to Christ doesn't mean that everything is going to be easy from here on out. In fact, in fact, you're probably going to be faced with more trials, more temptations, more things to battle than you've probably ever been faced with before, but the difference the difference is you now have the God of the universe living inside of you. 1 Corinthians 10.23, the second part of what we read a minute ago. While it says that all things are lawful, yes, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. What do we mean by that? This is, this is the part of the line that Christ has made for us that says, you know what, you may have the ability, you may have the power, you may have the authority to step over this line if you so choose because I've given you free will. This may not actually be the best decision for you to make. Yes, it may be lawful. Yes, you can do it. But the question comes down to not whether or not could you cross the line. The question is, should you cross the line? This is the line that is the most difficult sometimes to hold. This is the line that God calls us as Christians to hold when it comes to this idea of making decisions. And so I don't want to get too far away from, from this idea and this concept of us having to make tough decisions because that's really what we're talking about this morning. But I think it's important for us to understand these two different lines. And as we're going to get to the end here in just, just a couple of minutes... What line do you find yourself standing up against? What line do you find yourself either holding or stepping over? There are three things that I want us to keep in mind this morning as, as we discuss how to recognize and make these tough decisions so that we don't step over the line that Christ, that Christ has made for us. So that we don't find ourselves stepping over into the line that the world has laid out for us. Three things. The first one is this. When you're faced with a tough decision, are biblical principles influencing those decisions? Are biblical principles influencing those decisions? Proverbs 2.6 says this, For the Lord gives wisdom, from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll make your paths straight. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And while some of you are going, okay, well, those are really good scriptures. Those are maybe encouraging scriptures. How are they going to help me to understand? How are they going to help me to, to use these principles to inform and to influence the decision that I'm going to make. Well, there's some questions that you have to ask yourself. And I'm not talking about decisions like, should I go to the store today? I'm talking about decisions that are potentially life-changing decisions. Decisions that you're <coughs> wrestling with. Decisions that you're struggling with. Decisions that will affect maybe not only you, but the people around you, the people that you love. Some of those questions are, are very simple what does the Bible have to say about this issue? If as Christians we turn to God's word every single time we were faced with a huge decision, I think we would find that our lives would in fact 
be somewhat easier. I believe there is uh, some truth in the saying that, that we tend to bring harm to ourselves more often than not. You know, another question that we can ask ourselves, and, and this is something that, that takes a little bit of humility. We have to kind of swallow deep sometimes. Who can help me better understand what God's Word says about this decision? Call somebody. And I give you a word of advice. If you're struggling with the decision to make in this life, regardless of what it may be, if you call someone who is not a Christian, you call someone who is not going to give you godly advice, while the advice they give you may not necessarily be bad, they're probably not going to give you advice straight from here. More than likely, the advice they're going to give you is probably somehow related to that line that the world has laid out for us. You know, it was interesting, uh, as I was a young man, uh, before I was, was, was full-time in the ministry, I, I was part-time at, 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 a, at a church up in St. Joe, and uh, while I worked there, I also was a policy processor at American Family Insurance, which means I worked in a huge building uh, with a thousand other employees, and uh, you know, I, I just basically punched numbers on a keyboard all day. It's what I did. Uh, when I wasn't punching numbers on a keyboard, I was kind of the go-to guy for advice from many of the people who worked there uh, in the building. A lot of them were not believers. It wasn't a rough place, uh, just there was a lot of non-believers. But oftentimes, I would find myself being approached by different people that I may or may not have known, and they would ask me my opinion on things. And they would just, just ranging from, from, from many, many different areas. And what I soon, what I soon found out was, was a couple of things. First of all, I would find myself continually saying when I'm talking to them, well, God's word says this. And if you look at this scripture, you'll see that this, you know, is directly correlated to the issue that, 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 that you're talking about. And, and so we would talk in those terms. Soon I figured out they were really wanting to know what the ethical, moral, biblical standpoint of the decision, the thing that they were struggling with, said. They didn't go to church. They didn't have probably anybody else that they could go and ask this question. They weren't coming to me for my advice. They weren't coming to Jason to hear what Jason had to say. They were coming to Jason to hear what God's word had to say. When we're faced with a tough decision, find someone who can help you discern God's word. I get texts every week. I get phone calls, emails. Hey, where does it talk about this in the Bible? Hey, where, where I'm talking with somebody, how can I approach them with this in the Bible? Where is this story in the Bible? What does this story in the Bible mean? I don't always have the answers. Uh, if I don't know immediately, I'll say, hey, give me, give me 20 minutes. I'll, I'll get back with you. I'll look it up. I'll, I'll try to help. But seeking, seeking someone to help you in, in, in this decision-making process is a, is a big deal. It's an important step. The other question that you need to ask yourself in this, in this, first, uh, in this first note is that make sure you're not the only one that holds that interpretation, right? Make sure that when you look at God's Word and you discern it, that you don't have 15 other Christians going, I don't think that's what that says, Right? If you go up to somebody and go, hey, I can, uh, I can go do this because the Bible says all things are lawful. And you have 15 other Christians going, did you read the rest of that scripture? Because there's some important stuff that goes with that. I'll say this. At times, God does require, ask, challenge us to stand firm on biblical principles Maybe when other people aren't standing firm on biblical principles. Just make sure that the biblical principles you're standing on are actually biblical principles. That's huge. The second thing we need to think about this morning is before making a decision, any, any decision in fact, um, do you have all of the facts? Anybody in here ever made a decision before they had all the facts? Right? I'm the only one. Me and Mike. Mike raised his hand. Right? Um, 
Proverbs 18, 13 says this, Who gives an answer before he hears? It is folly and shame to him. Proverbs 18, 17, The first to plead his case seems right until another comes and examines him. How many of you have been ready to make a decision on something? How many of you have, have, have come to a place where you say, this is, this is what I'm doing, this is the final answer, this is where I'm going, this is how it's going to play out, and all of a sudden you realize, I didn't have all the information. In fact, there was some, some vital information that I didn't have. Information that kind of changed my opinion. Kind of changed the truth of the matter a little bit. How do we avoid being that person? What, what, what do we do? Well, first of all, we ask a lot of questions, right? Get to the bottom of what's going on. We have a lot of teachers um, in this room this morning, uh, a lot of former teachers in this room this morning. And how many times do you have a kid, whether they were in grade school or whether they were in high school, come up and say, this person did this and, and this happened. And, and it's, man, it's the end of the world. And you're like, how dare that kid do this? And then you ask a question of the other kid, and the kid goes, well, this person stabbed me with a pencil first. You know, facts, facts that maybe weren't given to you on the front side of the story. Um, there are always two sides to every story, right? Before we make a decision, and, 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 and we're talking about life-changing decisions here, before we make a decision, we need to make sure we have all the facts. Ask questions. Get information. Seek godly advice. <coughs> Don't, uh, don't fall victim to wishful thinking. Well, I'll make this decision. I'll be a little naive about this, and we'll just hope for the best to come out. I know many of us have done that before in various arenas, and our wishful thinking, we usually look back and say, man, I wish I would have thought through this a little bit more. The final thing this morning... Um, and talking about making these decisions is we need to make sure that the pressure or the timing of having to make the decision doesn't affect our decision. Right? Many of us are, are, are familiar, you know, um, I, I've had pastors before that, that, that have, as a younger man, they've, they've, they've taught me and they've told me, hey, if somebody comes to you with a really big decision and says, you need to decide right now what you're going to do, your answer should always be no. Until you've had time to really pray about it. Until you've had time to really think about it. Until you've had time to really study God's word about it. If it's that big of a decision and they want to know right now, you probably had better be safe and say no. You'll save yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of, a lot of pain. Proverbs 19.2 says, Also is it not good for a person to be without knowledge, and he who makes haste with his feet errs? Proverbs 21.5, The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. Questions to ask in this situation? Always be sure that this isn't a once-in-a-lifetime deal, right? Somebody says those words to you, it's probably not the truth. Don't let the fear of missing out on an opportunity drive your decision. I put down here, when in doubt, leave it out, right? If you don't know for sure, don't take the step. You know, right now, and, and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm by no means a financial guru. I leave that to Rick. Um, but, uh, you know, right now, one of the big, huge things, and Carter and I talk about this all the time, is Bitcoins, right? Bitcoins are huge right now. They started out at nothing, and now they're like 15000 a share or something like that, and people are just... People who bought early are just rolling in dough. You know, if they bought 100 shares, they're like, this is the greatest investment ever. And, and so there's a lot of question on Bitcoin, but um, a lot of your investors are going, I don't know about Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? I, I don't know that I can explain it to you. It's this imaginary internet-driven currency is the best way to put it. Rick, was that a good, was that a good example? It, it, it's something that doesn't really tangibly exist. But people are, are pouring money into it right and left. Again, I'm not your financial advisor. If you want to go invest in Bitcoin, by all means, buy me a share. What do I have to lose, right? Um, but people are saying, you know, you, ha you have to get in on this early. And I, at 15000 a share, that's a lot of money for me, right? 
That's a big deal. I would really want to make sure that if I do invest in something like that, that I've prayed about it. I haven't let the, the, the pressure of the moment push my decision. What, what, what is the point of this morning, and, and why do I bring all of this up? Uh, decisions, I guess a good word for it is plague us, right? Decisions plague us daily. We have to decide. We have to choose. One of the, one of the biggest things I think that I have learned um, as a pastor and, and I think even more so as a senior pastor than probably as a youth minister, uh, is that you can't please everybody all the time. You can't. We, we were talking about that this morning, Dallas and I were, because it's, you know, if we cancel church, we're going to have people upset that we cancel church. If we don't cancel church, we're going to have people upset that we shouldn't have had church this morning. And, and so it's an, impossible, it's an impossible scenario sometimes. That's why I always go, deacons make the decision, <laughs> Right? Sometimes, um, sometimes for us, it may seem like there is no easy answer. There's always going to be a portion that's bad. There's always going to be a portion that's good. As humans, we don't like the gray areas. We want the black and white. We want the, this decision is the right decision. This decision is what God wants me to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And sometimes we, we don't have that black and white. What do we do in those situations? We open this book. We find where it's talking about what it is that we're struggling with or thinking about or the decision is that we have to make. And we make the most biblically based decision that we can. And then we hold our line. We trust in God. We trust in our relationship with Christ. We honor Him in all that we do. And I promise you this. Whatever decision that you're faced with, whatever decision that you make, if you can honestly with a clean conscience say, you know what, this decision was a tough decision, but I know in making this decision it was a Christ-honoring decision, then you've made the right decision. Maybe not without consequences. Maybe not without some degree of fallout. We are called to be faithful in all that we do. I'm going to ask that Josh would come down and get ready for, for invitation this morning. I do want to, uh, I do want to thank you guys for, for making the decision to be here this morning. I'm sure some of you will probably make the decision to go sledding later this afternoon. Life is all about decisions. And, and the best way, I think the smartest way, to look to God's word when we're faced with something that could be life-changing. Pray with me this morning as we get ready for our time of invitation. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we do, even though it brings hazardous conditions, Lord, even though it keeps some people at home this morning, Lord, we do thank you for the snow. God, it's such a beautiful part of nature. Lord, I ask that as we head out of this place today, Lord God, that you would challenge us. God, that you would give us guidance and direction in our decision-making process. Lord, that we would be faithful to you, Lord, even when sometimes those decisions aren't quite black and white, Lord. God, that you would guide us through those gray areas. Lord, that we would be faithful to you. God, if we abide in your word, Lord, if we trust in your will for us, then black, white, gray, Lord, all of those decisions will ultimately lead to you. God, I just thank you so much for your loving and gentle hand that guides us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me this morning as we have our time of invitation.